Okay, hello, and welcome to the second presentation on the constructor pattern. Um, in the previous video, we applied it to React components, and in this presentation, we're gonna apply it to state management. But we're not gonna apply it to state management like within React. We're actually gonna apply it to state management outside of React. So we're gonna continue with our tic-tac-toe game, but we're gonna extract the state management of uh, the existing state management fused with React and the UI, pull it out, uh, use the constructor pattern, and then expose it to the components in an optimal way. And to do that, we're going to use a reactive uh, library so that our state becomes reactive and our components are going to observe the state they actually access um, and optimally reconcile. So we're going to use MobX, uh, but you could use something else like Preact Signals or whatever that is doesn't have their own opinion on how to encapsulate state management, like a strict concept of a store or a reducer or whatever it might be. Um, so I have everything set up here and we can quickly just review our code, which is already refactored to the constructor pattern where we have our board that has a status. That's the only state uh, it has uh, and some dependencies. And we can see how it produces the UI with that status and calls this handle click to actually click on the squares and with the implementation details of, uh, of that. And then we have the game which is also refactored so that you explicitly see the state it, it needs and then it returns the UI using that state and then we have the implementation details of, of the creating the moves and also handling the, the play and jumping between historic uh, moves. Uh, finally, we have our calculate winner, which is just a helper function. So let us just start by creating a function that's going to use the constructor pattern. So this function, I'm just going to call it create state, but you could have called it create st state store, create store, create TikTok, game engine, whatever, it doesn't matter. And we're going to make this observable. So we're using, let's see, import, or can I just do this maybe? No. Let's do observable from OBEX like that. And then we're going to return that state. That's going to be the interface that the React components can use to actually produce the UI for this game. So we're going to start by looking at the game state itself. And then we're going to iterate on this a bit. So first of all, we need to create our history. And let's see. That is history. Oh, sorry. Let's just move the whole thing, actually. Let's just do this. So we're kind of just moving logic. History, create history. So this also shows you like how you can use this pattern to very efficiently refactor a component into external state management, if you want to do that. Um, let's see. And then we have current move current move uh, x is next this is actually a derived state so we, oh look at that so that depends on the current move right and then we have current squares so let's do current squares and that's the history item based on the current move and then we have the moves is okay we can delete these ones. We're going to receive that as state instead. So we're going to have state history, state x is next, state current squares, state handle play. Um, and we also need to do state dot jump to because that's our next mission is to move these as well into our state store. And the only thing we're basically going to do here is just expose them as is. We're going to visit them again, but we're going to expose them and we have to make sure that they're pointing to the correct references here. 
state current move. So set history would be state history equals next history. Uh, current move will be state current move. And again, when we're jumping, we're just changing the current move to the next move. Cool. So now we actually have to expose this state. So hopefully we have the correct references. I uh, I thought about using TypeScript just to make sure I remember like all the pointers here, but I, I hope we're going to do fine. So let's see. Um, let's see. Let's see. So we're going to expose the state here. So we have the state and when we click it, it's still, it's still working. Okay, cool. But we cleaned up our components uh, quite a bit here. So the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to make a note that we actually need to know the winner to be able to create the status. And we also use the winner um, inside uh, handle click here. So I think we're going to just keep it as, um, as a helper function. But now that it's like, only our state management actually uses it. We're going to keep it inside the state management. Uh, so let's just move that first. I could have decided to make the winner like a derived state of the state management. So it just point to state.winner. Uh, but since this is only used internally, in, uh, well, that's not true, is it? That's definitely not true because we are using it here. So we are going to make it a uh, derived state. Excuse me. So we're going to return, calculate winner. We're going to do that based on the current squares. Do, 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 do. So now we have the winner inside there. So now we have to make sure that the winner actually gets down to this component. And the way we're going to do that is that instead of passing all these props, which we do generally to make sure that reconciliation is optimal, right? We can rather just pass the state now. And this is perfectly fine when you use a reactive approach. It's really good because the state object itself will never change, which means that the board will never reconcile again because of the parent uh, passing a new property or a property that changes its reference. So now whatever the board accesses from the state will cause it to reconcile. And whatever the game uh, component accesses from the state will make it reconcile. Maybe we wanted to optimize the moves and put them into their own components. Also just passing state and whatever it accesses will cause it to reconcile. Um, so let's see, we're gonna change to state here like this. And then we're gonna do state.current squares instead. You know what, let's just do Simplify it. Squares is state of current squares. We can use, uh, I guess so. And then on play, handle play. And we're actually gonna just call it directly. Because this UI knows nothing about how the state changes, it just knows which button was clicked. So that's that. And then we have state.winner and yeah we're using x is next up here i don't think we need to do that we can use uh, state.x is next and then we're gonna handle the actual click thing here we're gonna review all of this very shortly but let's have a look now we have handle play that will now actually receive the index. And then we have a check for winner. So we can just say state winner, or we have the squares here is, let's do the same thing, is current squares. So if we have a winner or the square is already taken, we're not gonna do anything. Or we're gonna make a copy of the squares and we're gonna update that with the actual new state. 
And then instead of like creating a new history, we don't actually have to do that now. We can actually say state.history.push next history. Uh, sorry, next squares, next squares, I mean. So we have the next squares here, and then we don't need this one anymore. And I think we're good. No, we made one mistake here. Yeah, state dot is x next. Now that was working. What did we forget? Next history. This is not next history. This is state history. There we go. Cool. Okay, so we got our game uh, working again. But now we have an external state store. So let's do a little review here. So we still have, have our simple square. Our board now is just taking in the state. And since it accesses so much of the state, we're just passing the full state, right? Uh, and we just um, emphasize what state we're using. Again, we're just producing the UI. And the only thing we have here now, which is an implementation detail, is how we create the status. Um, when it comes to the game itself, the only thing it does now is actually produce UI for the moves. Uh, and that's it. And when it comes to our state store, we use the same pattern. We create a function called create state. We define what does this uh, state look like? And then we return it. So this is like the public interface for the components. And then we have the implementation details of how this state actually moves forward, which looks like this. So there you basically have it. This is the constructor pattern for state management. But this can become way more powerful. Like you, tic-tac-toe is a very simple application. You might have a much more com complex application. And the constructor pattern allows you to, ju to just build and build on it. So you can have, just like components, you're composing components into a tree. You can also compose state into a tree, right? So in, just instead of having components, you have these functions that create some management of state, and then you can expose all the state on this root uh, object and your components can access that. Um, but I can show you that in um, maybe a third video where we go into how do you actually build up like a state tree from uh, the constructor pattern. Cool. Thanks for watching. I hope it was um, valuable and I guess I'll see you for the next video.